Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and this is a follow-up video. So we created this spoon actually over in the part workbench in one of the previous videos and I promised to go back and show you how to do it in the part design. Now in the part design you can see we've created one in there. We're going to be looking at two different methods to actually create this object. So one is with a boolean and one is with a reverse pocket. They're both using loss in there and we're going to be learning how they differ to the actual part workflow for creating the same object. So this technique can be used in many applications, not just for spoons, obviously. One of the viewers actually commented and saying that we can actually use this to create aircraft canopies. So that's just one example that we can use this technique for this actual workflow. So I hope you enjoy this channel and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Looking back at our part workbench model, we can see we've got a number of actions in here which include slices, extrudes, lofts, and also a boolean action here. And this action was the intersection of two shapes. So this is where the part workbench really comes into its own because it has a number of tools that really help with the manipulation and splitting of objects. We don't have the same range of tools in the part design. So how do we create an object like this? Well, I'm gonna close this object and I'm gonna create a new document, create a body and create a sketch along the X, Z plane, this one here, and hit OK. We're going to do the same as we did with the part, and that is create a number of sketches to loft through. This is to get our initial depth of the object and the initial shape. So first of all, we need a shape. Now this is where the loft in the part workbench and part design do differ. I'm going to create a boolean of the side profile of the spoon. Hit escape, hit escape again, and we're just going to manipulate this profile. So we have some kind of spoon shape here. Now this would be a valid profile to loft in the part workbench, but we can't do that in the part design because it has to be a closed sketch. We can loft individual lines in the part workbench, but we can't do that in the part design. So what do we do? Well, we take this line, or this B-spline, hit Control C. Now this will copy the B-spline and allow us to drop it. You can see the line that's created here. This shows you the distance away from the last point that was selected, or when we create it, it will pick the start point. Now to get around that, if I hit Escape, and actually select all this. Let's say I wanted it to, to copy from this point. All I need to do is select that endpoint. Let's bring this down a bit so it doesn't interfere with the navigation cube. Click so it's unselected and then click again so it's selected. Now hit Control C and you'll see the line is attached to this one. Now if I zoom in, I'm gonna just come away about this length. This is still not a close sketch so we need to add a line in here. I've got the auto constraints on. So what will happen if I hover over that line, you can see the auto constraints clicked in with a coincident constraint. If I click, that point is now coincident to that point and we get this line. So we just make the other point, the end point, coincident to that point. And now we get this line here. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So zoom out and zoom in using this point and this point and making sure we got the vertical constraint in there. So we've got our profile. We know this is closed because if we try to pad this, it will pad absolutely fine. But we can't use a pad on here. So if I padded this out 50 and then created our shape on here because it will be quite a two dimensional spoon because it will be only this surface here. We need to create a dip in this surface. 
and cancel that. And I'm going to do the same as what I did in the part workbench. Take the sketch, go out to edit, duplicate sketch, and then remove the XZ planks. We don't need that. And hit OK. The sketch has now been duplicated. We can click on the sketch and move the sketch. So in the placement, it wouldn't be in the placement because the attachment is above this. So look at the attachment position. So if the placement is under the attachment, then you know the attachment is always first. Now let's double click on this sketch and look at where the axis runs. So the red is the X and the green is the Y here. So Z will be pointing out this way and this is where we have to transform this object. Because if we look at our normal positioning here, you can see Z is running this way and X is actually running this way. But we're looking at the sketch, the actual axis relevant to the sketch. So Z will be this way. So if you draw a blue line through here, Z will be this way. So let's close that and click on the sketch. Look at the attachment, look at the position and look at the Z. And we can move this out like so. So this is going to be the width of the spin basically. So I may have gone a bit too far there. Let's go to about there. Now we need one for the depth. I'm going to use the same sketch again. So click on the sketch, go up to edit, duplicate selection, remove the X Z plane, hit OK. And now we've got this sketch here. We can move this along the attachment and we're going to move it down on the Y plane, I'm going to move it down a little way and just reduce so it's in the middle. Go back to our sketch, we can see we've gone 28. So this needs to be 14. So those are now placed. What we've got to do is create a loft through here to get the shape. So these don't run in sequence. We've got to select these in sequence. So select the first sketch, select the middle sketch, and select the last sketch. So you can see the sequence I've placed those in. This is the sequence the loft will run from here to here to here. And then press loft to select the profile. This will loft through those make sure the surface is closed. So we've got a closed surface there. We don't need a ruled surface because ruled makes those quite jagged and hit OK. Now we've got our loft. But it doesn't look like a spoon just yet. So what we need to do is remove material by using an inverse pocket across here. To do that, I'm going to click on top. So now we've got our loft, the additive loft. We need to create the top profile of the spoon. So we place the profile here. Now in the part workbench, what we did was place this profile on top of here and then extruded through here and used the loft to cut away material from that profile. We're gonna do something slightly different in the part design. So we need to click on the body and create a new sketch and we need to place it along the XY plane. So this is the plane looking down on the object. Hit OK. This will be placed below our loft, depending on where our loft is. So we may need to come into the model, come to the sketch that we've placed and come into the attachment, come into the position and change the Z angle and just move that up. and then click top again, and then we can start sketching. So for this, I'm going to place a very basic spoon shape across here. For that, I'm going to use the end point and rim point, and we're gonna make the head of the spoon. And what we're looking to do is just figure out where our curve is, 
So our curve is about here. And line that up with the head. We can do some finer adjustments later. And I'm going to place the neck of the spoon and also the handle. I'm just doing this quickly, but you can take much more care if you so desire. So now we've got one side. I can hit escape and I can highlight those. And what I'm looking to do is mirror this across something. So at the moment I haven't got anything. So I'm going to put some construction geometry in here. So I'm just going to add a line for mirroring. That's got the horizontal constraint there, which I can mirror over. So I can pull this nearer. I'm not going to constrain this fully down. I'm just doing this for speed. So I'm going to bring in this point like so. And make this construction geometry. We're going to use this geometry to mirror across. So I'm going to highlight those. Let's just click on that one as well. We now need to click on this line because this is the last thing we've actually selected. And we come up to the mirroring and mirror that across. Now we can use our arc. Use these two points and create a curve like so and do it on the other side as well. Hit escape. We can add some geometry in here so we can line all these up if we so desire. And these points and these two and finally these two. And we can place other constraints in here as we see fit. So for instance, I may want to constrain these two some vertical constraints. So that will do me for now. So we have the spoon shape and the curvature here. So what we're going to do is click on top and I'm going to draw a square around here. You notice this is not fully constrained. You can fully constrain it if you so desire. I'm just going to draw that square around there. And what this allows me to do is basically use it as a cookie cutter. So I close that. We've got our constraints partially set on the object. And we've got a square or rectangle going around the outside. And that rectangle, if we look at it, it's larger than the loft. Because we're going to pocket all the way through using this object. And what will happen is this will be acting as a void and going through this loft. So if I hit the sketch, click on it, click on the pocket, We'll go through all, and you notice what's happened there. It's removed that material away, and we're left with a spoon shape. So this can be used in many applications. When you've got some kind of curvature like this, and you want to create a shape from that loft. That's okay that, and clean up the display. So clicking on the body, we look at the view and the deviation and bring this down to something like 0.1. And that just cleans up those edges there for the display. So now we've got this spoon shape here. If you wanted to, we can bring the lofts in a bit. So we've got our pocket here, we've got the attitude of loft, and we look at these lofts, how they go and can see what's happened there. We can change this if we so desire. So for instance, if I click on the front and you can see that, that it's taken the surface, this is curved surface here. We could bring this side and this side in to make this more flatter. So we have this loft here and we'll bring down this edge to lay alongside here and this edge to lay alongside here, just leaving the curvature here to allow for a more flatter handle on there. So you'll have 
you drew a line across here, this will be a curve. And then you'll see that all these will actually be straight. So coming down to here, this loft here will be aligned with these two. So these two will come down and align those. So we've got the curvature going all the way through there. Let's have a look at a different way of doing this. Let's delete the pocket and delete the additive loft. And also edit this sketch. So we've got our sketch here. I'm going to take away these lines. So we're just leaving the spoon shape. Let's hit close. I'm going to create a new body. I've got this body in here. And we're going to separate these bodies out. So these are all the sketches for the loft, as you can see. And we're going to pull the top sketch into a new body. So this one here, into this body, which at the moment I can't do. We can link it in there. I'm just going to pull it outside first. So this is outside the body and then pull it inside this body here. So what I've done is released it from the main body and then place it into body 001. I just pulled it onto the free CAD document name here. This is our document. Pulled that out of the document and then pulled it back into body 001. So we've got one body which will be the loft and a second body which is our spoon shape. Let's loft these again. So taking these, just get an idea of how to use the loft. So we need to select these in sequence. So sketch, then it will sketch. 0, 2. So you can see some green, green, and then lastly, sketch 0, 1. And we use loft or the part design. It's an additive feature. So create an additive feature and do an additive loft through there. You can't use that at the moment because what we need to do is make that body active. You can see the body down the bottom is in bold. So the current active body is this one at the moment, which is our spoon. So we double click this body, that makes that active. It's bold now. So now we can select these in sequence. It doesn't matter which way around you select these for the loft, as long as they flow through in order. So it doesn't matter if we select this one first or this one, as long as we click them in order, like so, so we can click them from the screen like so. I know we've only selected an edge from there. You can see they're selected on the left-hand side here. And we can use the part design, create an additive feature and additive loft. Make sure it's closed, otherwise we get a void in the middle here. And hit OK. What we're gonna do now is come over to this body, the spoon body, Double click it to make it active. And I'm going to pad that. And we can't pad the body. We've got to select the sketch first. So this sketch here and then pad. And what direction do we want to go? We want to place it in the other direction. At the moment, it's 10 millimeters. If we hit reverse, it will send it 10 millimeters down this way. Let's try 100. So that's gone all the way through there. It's a bit too much. So 75 has taken it almost all the way through. Actually, let's go 100. So that's all the way through. I hit enter to place that all the way through there. So we've got two bodies now. This obviously might be a bit over the top because we've taken this sketch way up here. We can bring this down and do this if we so desire. But what we've got now is two bodies and we can use booleans against those bodies. So I'm gonna select on the loft, go up to part design, boolean operation, and we've got the different ones here, fuse, cut, and common. So click add body. You can see they've disappeared, and that's because we've got the active body here, and we've got a body here. So double click to make the loft active, so our loft is active. 
click on boolean see a loft has disappeared click add body and now select the body that we want to remove so i've selected body 001 we've got fuse those are fused together cut we'll cut those so you can see it's cut that out of there and we've got common which allows us to create the spoon like so so let's just go through that again I hit OK, we've got one body now with a boolean feature in there. I'm just going to delete that boolean feature and bring those two back. So we're looking at the shape that we want. So this curvature here, we want that active. So that's one with our loft. We need to make that active. So double click on that. We click it and then run the boolean feature. The loft disappears, so we add a body to it. So add body and click on the other body. So at the moment we've got fusion. Drop this down to common and therefore we get the spoon. And then hit OK. And what you'll see is that we've got the spoon sitting there. And inside there we've got a boolean operation which is our last action. So what happens if we do this in reverse? So let's get rid of this boolean feature and bring back the two bodies. This time, I'm gonna double click this body, the extrude, this one here. So body 001, which is the extrude. Gonna run a boolean operation against that extrude. We can see that we've got the original extrude a sketch there, which is visible, hit add body, and I'm going to click on the loft. We've got the same thing. Come down, use a cut. Not much has happened. Come down and use a common. And you can see that's worked as well because we're creating an object where they both share a common surface. So this surface here. Let's just click on that sketch and press the space bar just to get rid of that. So you can see that it works both ways around. When we hit OK, you see we have our boolean here. Remember that we're not just limited to the shape. We can come into the original pad, bring back the sketch, double click it, and change this sketch if we so desire. So for instance, I could, let's say, turn this into something like this. Now we'll just trim out some geometry. Which would be this part. Just need to hit delete. Hit close and can see straight away that's taking effect. Just control Z that and just hide that sketch. So that's two ways of making this spoon and curved objects. One using the additive loft and using a reverse pocket and the other one using a boolean technique. So this video complements the original workflow that I did for the spoon in the part workbench but this time doing a part design. Let's have a look at the two and compare what we have. This is the part design workflow. As you can see, there's not too much in here. Compared to the spoon from the part workbench, you can see that we've actually got quite a lot going on here. So we've got the sizes, the extrudes, the common between the slices. And if we look at the sketches that made up the loft, so this loft here, you can see that loft is a single sketch. So look at the sketch. You can see how that loft goes through there. This is the original strut. And it's a single B spline that goes through there. In this part of the sketching, it's more simpler. 
than the part design. But the actual modifications with the loft, there's a few more steps in there to get the end result. We do end up with a common where two pieces of material share the same surface, the same as in the part design. So we have a boolean here, which is a common between here. So this was a common type common here. We can see our workflow is a lot cleaner, easy to follow here when we look back into the tree view. Sketches are more complex because they're skinned. So we've got the upper and lower skin for the profiles and we loft through those. That means when it comes to something like creating a flatter handle by moving these, then the profile of the part workbench is much easier to manipulate because we have one rather than two B splines to deal with. So I hope you found that video useful. Obviously we can use this for different applications. For example, we may want to create something like an accelerator pedal along with a connection shaft. And we'll go through the same process as this. So if we place this, say up this way, then you can see how this would be used in the same way. So this will be the actual accelerator pedal and we would have some kind of connection that goes up here. So we can use the same kind of technique to create these types of models. So I hope you found that video useful. I hope you found it interesting. I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon.